Whilst I was on my summer hiatus, Microsoft added a new function to Excel, equals copilot. So what does it do? It lets you type a question or instruction into a cell and then it uses AI to give you an answer. At the moment, it's only available to users on the Beta Insiders channel and it will only work if you have a paid for $20 a month Copilot license. I'll be honest, in the real world, in my opinion, right now the function has limited usage. But I'm going to demo it anyway because I think it's important to stay aware of what Microsoft are adding to Excel, even if it's not directly relevant to you right now. Let's start with a simple example. I need a list of the names of the Mac operating systems. Unlike Windows, where the operating systems are assigned numbers like Windows 10 and Windows 11, etc., on the Mac, the operating systems are given names. And I want the names to be listed down column A, starting at A1. So I type equals copilot, open brackets, and after the open brackets, I type in my question or request, which is known as a prompt, and that goes in double quotes. So there's my prompt. I'll then close the brackets and press enter. As you can see, it generates a dynamic array or a spill array, as some people call it. So the answers spill down column A. When you click on a cell that contains the copilot function, you get a pop up that tells you that the value in that cell has been generated by AI and clicking on the thumbs up or the thumbs down sends feedback to Microsoft, which they can use to tweak and improve the tool. Now, when I was testing this demo out, what it did is it gave me just the list of operating systems. It didn't include the date that the operating system was released. And I didn't ask it in this example to do that either. It's just taken it upon it to do it. So that actually messes up my second demo because in my second demo, I was going to edit the formula and I was going to ask it to include the year of release. But it, as I said, it seems to have done that itself. So let's see what it comes back with. There we go. It's actually, that's interesting. It's actually changed what it had in column A. And that just shows you that this function, like pretty much everything AI related, can produce different results every time you run the prompt. But what it's done here is it's regenerated the array and this time it spilled down and across. So how the copilot function works is it takes your request and turns that into instructions. It then sends those instructions to a powerful computer system known as an AI model. And that AI model is actually run by Microsoft within their own cloud system. That AI model then processes your request and sends back a response, which Excel then displays in your spreadsheet. When you enter a function, any function, copilot, sum, xlookup, into a cell in Excel, what you enter inside the brackets is known as the function's argument. All an argument is, is information that you provide to the function for it to do what it needs to do. Now, in the example I've just done, I provided one argument, the question or request. However, the copilot function can take a second optional argument. And that second argument is a cell or a range of cells. So I'm going to go to E1 and I'm just going to type some numbers down column E, one to five. And then I'm going to go to another cell. Any cell will do. G1 will do. And in there, I'm going to put equals copilot, open brackets. My prompt is going to be, what is the average? Then I put a comma to separate the arguments. And the second argument, which they call the context, is, as I said, the range of cells. So select E1 to E5, close brackets and enter. Is calculating the average of a set of numbers something that I'd ask AI to do? Probably not, especially given what Microsoft say about the Copilot function. Copilot uses AI and can give incorrect responses. Although it looks like in this example, 
the answer it's come up with is correct, but you can't rely on it. Microsoft also say that to ensure reliability, you should avoid using Copilot for, and then it lists several things, including numerical calculations. It recommends that you use Excel's built-in formulas like sum and average and so on for any task requiring accuracy or reproducibility. They also say the function may return different results on recalculation. And I think that's just been proved by my first example. So in other words, if I change one of the numbers in column E, so I'll change that four to a seven, it does recalculate but there's no guarantee that the updated result is correct. Although again, in this case, it does look like it's correct. Now, this is a simple example, and I'm using that for demo purposes. It's easy to see if the result is correct or not. But in the real world, where you might choose to use AI for more complex formulas, that's where the errors would be harder to spot. This is a list of expenses claimed by three lawyers at a law firm. Each lawyer has a code assigned to them. I've been asked to calculate how much lawyer ALR has claimed. So in G1, I used the copilot function. It comes up with an answer. And be honest, if you're using AI, you're using it to save time. Or you're using it because you don't know the correct way to do the calculation. So as long as the result looks in the ballpark, I think you're going to accept it. But for the purpose of the demo, if we look at G2, I've used the sumifs function. And this function says add up the numbers in C2 to C30, where B2 to B30 is ALR. So I can categorically state that the number in G2 is correct. And because the two numbers aren't the same, it means the number in G1, which was generated by AI, must be incorrect. And what happens if I change ALR to ABC? Well, let's do that in the sum ifs function. That comes up with a zero because there is no code ABC. But if I edit the formula with the copilot function in it and change that to ABC, <laughs> it comes up with that value, which again, it didn't come up with that when I tested this out earlier. So does that mean you should avoid using this function altogether? Not at all. Let me show you some examples where it could be useful. This one may not be useful in a business sense, but you could substitute the demo data that I've got with some data of your own. Here I have a list of soccer teams and I need the name of each team stadium. So in B2, I've used this function. I've said, what is the name of the team stadium? And then the second argument is A2 to A11. And I do know that all of those answers are correct. Here, I have a list of client contact details, name, job title, email address, phone number. And I needed to extract the email address from each cell in A1 to A20. Usually with data like this, there's a way of separating each item, a comma or something like that, but not with this data. In fact, there's no consistency with this data. For most of the entries, the email address comes after the job title. But for Leo on row 16, you can see that the email address comes before the job title. So this is the formula I used in C1. I said extract the email address and the reference for the context was A1 to A20. And you can see it's done it, even for Leo. In this example, I have a list of employees who've recently had their annual performance review. The manager has been asked to provide a one-line summary for each employee, and that's what's in column B. The copilot function in C2 has been used to determine the result. So I've asked it, is the review positive, negative, or neutral? I've then given it the range, column B, and it's looked at each of the entries in column B and put the appropriate word as the answer. And again, if we read through those and we compare them to the data in column B, I think in all cases, it's come up with the right result. Finally, here I have some sales data. And what I need is a summary of this data. So this is the function that I've used. 
I've put the function on a separate sheet because I want to apply some formatting and I don't want it to affect the sales data. So I've asked it to look at the data in A1 to H51 on the sales data sheet and I need five key insights to give to the CEO. In the prompt, I've told it how many insights I want. I've also said that it's for the CEO so that it hopefully provides insights that the CEO would be interested in, as opposed to the head of finance or the head of marketing. Ultimately, Copilot is just another Excel function, which means that I can combine it with other functions. I can apply conditional formatting or any other formatting or, or do anything else that I would do with any other function. So it's placed the results into five separate cells, A1, to A5. And what I actually want to do is I want to combine the text in those five cells into a single cell. To do that, I can use the text join function. So what I want to do is have all five insights in A1, each one on a separate line with a blank line in between. So this is what I'll do. I'll edit the formula in A1 and I'll change it so that before the word copilot, just after the equal sign, I'll type text join, which is the name of the function, open brackets. The first argument of the text join function is the delimiter, and that is basically the separator between each item. And as I said, what I want to have is I want to have a blank line between each item. So this is what I do. I'll type char, open brackets, 10 close brackets, ampersand, char, open brackets, 10 close brackets. char, open brackets, 10 close brackets is a code meaning line break or new line. So what this is doing is generating the five key insights, but instead of spilling them into five separate cells, it's combining them together into a single cell with two line breaks. Think of it like pressing enter twice in Word between each one. So each one's going to appear on a separate line, but we're going to get a blank line between each one. Still haven't finished that function. I put a comma and then I need to choose true or false and I'm going to choose true. So I'll just double click on it from this list. And what true means is it means if there are any blank cells within the range A1 to A5, ignore them. There won't be any in this case, but if there were, they would be ignored rather than adding extra blanks into the combined text. I then need another comma between the true and the third argument of text join, which is the text I want to combine, which is the whole of the copilot function. So I'll put a comma in there and then I need a closing bracket at the end to match the opening one of the text join and press enter. So what it's done is it's now combined those five entries into one cell. Obviously that is impossible to read. So I'm going to make column A wider. I'm going to make row one a little bit taller and I'm then going to turn the wrap text on for A1 and make row one even taller. So there we go. We have our five insights all in the one cell and that's it. It's not perfect. There are definitely some limitations right now and even Microsoft acknowledge that. But as I always say, when I talk about AI, we're still in the early days of this technology and I am confident it will keep getting better over time. So if you have access to the Copilot function, I'd encourage you to give it a try and see what it can do for you. And don't forget, use those thumbs up and thumbs down buttons to let Microsoft know how it's working for you. And let me know how you get on via the comments below. If you'd like more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.